Okay, this is the case for Jeremy Irvin, DOC 389956. We have Sean Shepard, who is the stepfather, who will be speaking in support. And we have Alexis Domineal, who is the victim, who will be speaking. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Irvin. Good afternoon. For the record, sir, tell us uh, once again your name and DOC number. Jeremy Irvin. Mr. Irvin, my name is Cheryl Renatza. My colleagues on the panel today, Ms. Pearl Wise and Mr. Tony Marabella, I'm going to read some identifying information into the record, ask you to verify that information, and then I'll start the inter parole interview process with you. And when we finish the interview, you will hear from the warden there, and then we'll hear from the folks who've indicated they'd like to speak today. And then at the end, you'll be allowed to make a statement to wrap it up before we go. Okay. You ready? Okay. So, Mr. Irvin, you're classified as a second felony offender. You are currently serving a 10 year sentence for attempted carnal knowledge, two counts, and then five counts of carnal knowledge of a juvenile. You have a parole eligibility date, which is April the 3rd, 2021. You do not earn good time, and your full term date is April 3rd, 2026. Is that correct? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. No. Okay. You're going to have to speak a little louder so we can hear you. So, how old are you, sir? I'm 41. And how long have you been in jail? Uh, almost five years. So, about five years of your 10 year sentence. Yes, have you ever been in jail before this? No. What for? Uh, attempted first degree murder and false imprisonment. Mm -hmm. And how long, well, how much time did you do for that? I did uh, 14. 14 years? Yes, no. All right, so let's talk about this, this particular case that you're, that you're here before us today for. The victim, how old was the victim? 15. 15? 14. 14, that's what my record shows. And how old were you? 32. Okay, and it's my understanding she was your girlfriend's daughter. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and... Um, It seems that you went, you had a jury trial and you were found guilty. Yes, ma'am. And, and it seems as though my reading of the record that I had before me, you, you claimed uh, innocence. Yes, ma'am. Do you still maintain that? No, no. Okay. What concerns me is uh, not only this crime, but when I look at your priors, I mean, you just mentioned one, even though... Um, you're classified as a second felon, second felony offender. You have a an extensive criminal history. Um, you mentioned the attempted first degree murder and false imprisonment that was in 2000, and then I also see a, a simple burglary uh, where you you received a 12 year sentence. I don't know how long you, how much time you did on that. There's another attempted first degree murder in 1997. What's going on with all that violence? I'm, I'm sorry. I, uh, I, went, I went on a, uh, I was very young and I went on a little crime spree where I broke into a house and I stole a, uh, a gun. And me and my little brother were trying to go to Indiana to my dad and he, was, he made some very bad decisions. Uh, but I did have uh, a bird, I did have some burglaries and attempted murder uh, that was all in the same event of time. I think it was a total of four where me and my little brother jumped out the car and we fired we gun in the air and we got four counts of attempted first degree murder and two counts of false imprisonment. Okay. Now, 
let's talk about this this particular case. It, it, the record may, indicates there may have been another victim, which was the sister to this this victim, and that that uh, abuse went on over a period of time, period of years, right? So let's talk about what you've been doing since you've been in jail. I see that you have been involved in a lot of faith-based studies and programs. What else have you done? Uh, I'm currently in some programs now, four of them. Uh, and I'm just, I'm, I'm open to learn. I'm, I'm eager to learn. I'm, I finally settled down in my, in my, my spirit to where I want to learn and I want to, I want to be better. I want, I want to be, I want my future self to say, man, congratulations. You really took the time and the initiative to better yourself. And I, I never want to be in this position again. Well, that's good to know. Uh, so tell us, you, you said you're enrolled in some programs now. Tell us what that is. Free release, cage of rage, living in balance, and uh, sub, uh, what about a sex offender program? I'm currently enrolled in that, but it's been put on hold. So, have you? When did you enroll in that program? Uh, 2019. How many phases have you completed? First one. Just the first one? I'm in the first one. Oh, so you didn't complete the first one. Okay. But you 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 were enrolled and then now the program's inactive. Mm -hmm. Why do you think we should grant you an early release given your history? I've given had a lot of thought myself and I've truly stepped into a, a period in my life to where I really want, I want so much more for myself. I've never, I'm, I've never given my chance, to myself a chance. And it seems like my, Life has been full of just mishaps and mishaps. I've always involved myself in, around the wrong people that just drug me down. And, you know, through some stuff that's happened in my life, I've had a wake up call, like, like an alarm clock going off that just says, Hey man, it's time to wake up. It's time, like you gotta take initiative for yourself. You gotta stand up. If you if this is what you if this is what you want, continue on this road. But it's not what I want. I, I want so much more in life. I've never I've never experienced anything. It's, it's been really hard. I, I, I wanted the chance to to get married, to have children of my own, to, to travel, to, to just be a, a, a productive person in, in my community. I mean, I love to help. I love to, I'm outgoing. I, I just see a need that I, I want so much to be a part of. It. And my, my heart hurts because I've done this to myself on several times. And I feel like when I was younger, I just lived for the moment. I didn't care what tomorrow brought. I just did what made me happy at the time. And now I want, I want something. Like I, I don't want this no more. I, I want to, I want to be around. I want a relationship with my family. I want, I want inner peace that that comes with being productive and being a part of people's life that really say, hey, man, I really want you to come over here and be a part of it. 
Well, I'm glad to hear that you've given that some thought. And I think you said your life has been filled with mishaps. Would you say maybe your life's been filled with poor choices? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and now you know there are consequences to those choices and those actions. So, so let me um, just make you aware there is um, considerable opposition to your early release by law enforcement and the uh, folks in the judicial system. You need to be aware of that. I don't really believe there's anything you can do to change it, but you need to know that. All right. Um, I don't have any other any mm -hmm. other questions of you at this time, uh, Mr. Marabella. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Irvin, uh, I, I, I'm glad to, to, to hear that you, you've accepted responsibility for what you did. Uh, and I'm a firm believer in that you have the absolutely right, absolute right to uh, uh, the presumption of innocence and you've got a right to, to, to have the, the, the DA prove your case. So I, I certainly don't hold that against you. I understand that. My question is, I guess, when when did you come to this acceptance of responsibility? When my mom asked me to, to take responsibility and stop running from my mistakes. Let, 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 let me ask you a question. Uh, you actually went to trial? Yes, sir. And the young girl had to testify in the trial? Yes, sir. What did you think about that? How did you feel for her when she had to testify? I was given the opportunity to, of a plea bargain of 10 months and an obscenity plea. And I still forced her to testify. And I feel like I was more running from what was going on and not, I didn't want to take responsibility. I just wanted well, to- What do you think she was feeling having to go through and say all of those things? I know she was very hurt and pulled up. I know that my actions were not actions of a sound adult. Mr. Irvin, uh, I, I see that you're in a lot of programs right now, and those are good programs. Those are very, very good programs. Uh, but I also note on your record that you were in programs before, and you either quit or got kicked out for whatever reason. Well, why is that? I didn't hear your question. I, I said you were in programs before, several years ago. And you either quit some of those programs, some of those programs you were kicked out of. Why is that? In my first incarceration? Whenever it was. Uh, when I was younger, I just, I, I did things that I can't explain now. I just, I lacked wisdom, I lacked knowledge, and I just, I made a lot of poor choices. <clears throat> That's all the questions I have, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Wise? No, I have no questions. All right, let's, uh, can we hear from the warden? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was reviewing some of the information here in front of me in regards to Senator Irving. Um, I think he actually needs to get into the program. I know some of it's not his fault, but it's something greater than he's definitely needed. Um, he currently don't have his GED or something he needs as well. Uh, I think those uh, programs, once he get into it, it should help him out a lot. But uh, he's definitely needed. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Shepard, could we hear from you? Yes, thank you very much. Um, so 
I had sent you all a letter to say that uh, I have the resources to help Jeremy get reintegrated to society and he's got a good support network. I kind of regret that I didn't send some additional information more about his situation and how he ended up in this situation himself. Um, he had a falling out with his mother. Um, she has passed away uh, a little over three years ago, um, but it resulted in him ultimately ending up being kind of uh, ostracized from the family and homeless. Uh, I think her main, the main problems were she, he got involved with a girl named Tabitha, which is the victim's mother. And by the way, Alyssa is a great girl. We considered her a grand child almost during the time they were together. But uh, she convinced him that they had had a baby together and it wasn't true. And then there was some drug problems and other things like that. Um, even right before the trial, I do not know. We still to this day not know why he did not take that plea bargain. He he had a chance to be, he would have long since been out by now. I'm very grateful to Judge Wilson that she has given him a chance to get back out. Um, and we're going to do everything we can to support him and make sure that he stays um, a productive member of society. I think from the standpoint of uh, early release, it would be better to get him back out and reintegrated to society now, rather than to continue to stay in prison and eventually become basically institutionalized. Jeremy, he when he first went into prison, he couldn't even read or write. So he has come a long way that we probably wouldn't recognize, you know, because we just accept that people can do these things. He never had a great IQ, I would say in the range of about an 80. So he has come a long way from that standpoint. And I think given the proper support that uh, he'll be able to make it. And I intend to give him that support. And I'll take any questions. Uh, I don't think we have any questions, but thank you, uh, Mr. Shepard, for sharing sharing with us. We appreciate uh, your input and uh, the information you've given us. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Domenio? Is it Alessa, Alexis or Alessa? I'm sorry, your, your microphone's on mute. Alexis. Yeah. Alexis, okay. Go ahead, ma'am, what would you like to tell us? Um, I really don't feel like he should get out. I feel like his mentality has not changed. I feel like he still has that predator mentality. Um, I'm sorry, I'm shaking. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm terrified for my life. If he does get out, I, I me and my sister both, I, I'm speaking on her behalf. She had to go to school today. Uh, she wasn't able to make it. Um, but we would rather see him sit there. We don't feel like he, he needs to be any part of society. All right, thank you, ma'am. We appreciate um, your testimony as well. Thank you for um, being part of the process. Mr. Arvin, is there a statement you'd like to make to the uh, panel before we vote? No. All right, go ahead. In 2009, when I was released from Angola, I went home as, as a man in a, in a child's body. I, was, I went to prison at 16, 17, and I got released at 30. And I made some really bad choices. And I completed my parole, which was three years. I did everything that was required of me. And just the part of me to be happy, I allow myself to go down some very dead end roads that I've learned a deep lesson from. Uh, 
having to admit my wrong and shame myself has been a truly remarkable part of my success and part of my taking responsibility and moving forward. And my past is a part that I've closed. And moving forward is a book that's just waiting to be wrote that is so is going to be filled with so much good because I am a good person. I am, I am, I, I have character. I've built in these past four years, I have built myself up so much for success. For, not even for this day, because three months ago I didn't even have this chance. That's right. Since my first day of incarceration, I have told myself. You can do this. You can overcome this. I, I've given my life to Christ. I have gained so much inner peace and strength moving forward. I've learned that I don't want to be the drain no more. I want to be the power. I don't want no more talkies in my life. I, my first time I was released from Angola, I came home and I had no family support. I had family support, but my mom and dad, they live in South Africa. My brothers live in Chalmette. I came home to nobody, nobody was there. And I can't say that that's their fault, but now they're there. And now this would be the most perfect opportunity for me to finally be successful and with the right help. I mean, I just love the opportunity to, to for the opportunity to, to be a new person with a new chance to be successful. I, I just want so much. It's just, I want to be the person that I've never given myself the chance to be. I want to, I just want to get married for the first time. I want to find what it is that people say, I've never been to prison. And you ask them why, they say, because man, I'm not going to give up all this. I want that. I want what's going to keep me solid to a foundation that's going to say, man, there's no way I'm going to ever do this again. <laughs> well, uh, I'm glad that you've given it all a lot of thought. Obviously, you have. You've thought a lot about your future. Would that be a fair statement? All right. Listen, I'm uh, I'm going to go ahead and and, uh, and vote. I'm ready to uh, to offer my vote, and I like the things that you're saying. I like the ideas uh, that you've put forth and that you've given a lot of thought. I can't vote for you today based on the fact that you haven't had the sex offender treatment. I think that you have to have that before I can vote for you. Um, you have a history of violence. I mean, you've explained that to us. You have law enforcement opposition. And, you know, it's not your fault you only got, you know, enrolled in the sex offender program and then we got hit with the COVID. But based on the opposition that's been expressed here today, uh, the nature of your offense uh, and the lack of sex offender treatment, my vote today is to deny your parole. I want you to keep going, keep moving forward you're gonna have the opportunity for another parole hearing. And when you're eligible to reapply, I encourage you to do so. And I hope by that time, you will have been able to take advantage of the sex offender program. Good luck to you, sir. Mr. Marabella. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, Mr. Irvin, uh, uh, first off, uh, Ms. Uh, Dominio, I wanna thank you for being here and the courage of your coming and, and, and speaking at this hearing. Uh, Mr. Irvin, uh, I understand 
uh, and, I, and I've, I've, I've heard you talk and I've heard your stepfather talk about your life. You've had a rough life. Uh, life's been tough for you. You were dealt a, dealt a, a pretty tough hand. Uh, that doesn't excuse any of the actions that you've done. Uh, you, you indicated, you know, I'm a good man. Uh, I'm not the bad person. You know, good people make bad choices and do bad things sometimes. That doesn't make you a bad person, but you pay the consequences for the choices that we make sometimes. You seem to be on the right track now. Uh, you've got a stepfather who is very supportive of you. You have a family now that is supportive of you that you didn't have before. You are recognizing some of the issues that have plagued you all of your life, the shame. You know, as your stepfather said, my goodness, why didn't you take that deal? I mean, you'd have been out a long time ago, but you didn't take it. And I, I guess deep inside, it's shameful to admit what you did. And I understand that. But it sounds like you're, you're, you're learning some things that can help you deal with those things. You're a young man. You're 41 years old. You've got a lot of life left. And you're in some good programs. The wardens indicated that you're in some good programs and they're going to help you over there. I encourage you to continue to work those programs. If I'm still on this board, the next time you come up and you've completed those programs, it's likely that I'll listen and probably vote to let you out. But today, I just can't do it. But you are on the right track, and I want to encourage you to keep moving in that direction. So good luck to you, Mr. Irwin. Ms. Wise. Uh, Mr. Jeremy, have you ever heard the expression, hurting people hurt people? Yes, ma'am. That's what I heard. That's what came to mind today when you were talking. Uh, it's time for you to stop being a hurting person so you can stop hurting people. But today I concur with my colleagues. My vote is to deny for the reasons already been stated on the record. Good luck to you, sir. All right, good luck to you, Mr. Irwin. Today your parole has been denied. Reapply. Okay. You, you, Alexis, you are awesome you are brave and thank you Ms. Mary Bella for at least mentioning it but it is insane when I'm about to what I'm about to tell you you'll say I don't believe it but if you've been watching this long enough you will believe it and it's uh it's just what I'm going to share with you is just how disgustingly broken the system is it is so broken, it is sickening. First of all, the idea that that cockroach could get a plea deal for six months? Are you, no, 10 months? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Why? This man is dangerous. In his short lifetime at the time, he had served prison for first degree attempted murder. And then you go back in time and he has another attempted first degree. Two attempted first degree murder where he's done prison time. When the victim comes out and speaks and said, I am in fear for my life. That's not a false statement. This man has tried to kill people multiple times. He served time for it. You don't think that she has a genuine reason to be in fear for her life? And she comes up here alone. There's no assistant DA being a guard for her, as some type of support for her. No, she has to come here alone. What do you think that's like? His, his enabling stepfather, they always have someone enabling. He going on the sob story, up until the time of the trial, he thought that he had a baby with her. How is that appropriate? He was just literally assaulting her daughters. 
What is wrong with you? Then you know what gets worse? The judge, pathetic judge, gives this cockroach, this repeat offender, this dangerous man, gives him literally a slap on the wrist sentence. A slap on the wrist sentence. So he was found... Remember this, he's offered a plea deal, which makes absolutely no sense. So we, but we've already clarified that the district attorneys in the state of Louisiana couldn't care less about these things. If he had possession charge, if he was dealing a gram of something and he went to trial, he could have gotten an habitual offender charge. He, this was his third charge. Why he was not charged an habitual offender is beyond me. We've seen people get life sentences for, for the a minor for minor charges. But no, he's found guilty by a jury. After the victims are made to testify, he was found guilty of five counts. Five. What does the judge do? What does the judge do? At this time, I will sentence you to five years with the Department of Public Safety for each count. Oh, that's 20 years. Okay, judge. So, you know, it's not the best, but that's on the high end. Um, thank you. Wait, it's not over. And that time will run consecutive for a total of 25 years. Oh, my gosh. Wait, 25. Thank you, Judge. Thank you for, thank you for protecting our society. Thank you. You know, when, 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 they elected you in 2021 to be the, the 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 judge for the second district of Louisiana Third Circuit Courts, um, and the second district judge of Louisiana Third Circuit Court of Appeal outright primary election in November of third of 2020 to serve as a judge until 2030. We thought that you would protect our children. With the Department of Public Safety and Corrections, and on the charge of attempted carnal knowledge of a juvenile, I will sentence you for an additional two years on each count. That will run concurrent. On the 25 years, uh, and then this is where it all falls apart. This is where it all falls apart. For some reason, this judge says on this on the 25 years i will suspend 15 of them i will suspend 15 of them and after you serve the first 10 when you are released you'll be released on 5 year supervision what does that mean it means that he he was given a plea deal. He didn't go take the plea deal. He went to trial. The victims had to get on the stand. The jury found him guilty, and she sentences him on the low end of the spectrum for each count of five years and then suspends 15 years of it. It's not over yet. It's not just that. It's not just that. You would think, well, I mean, at least he'll be signed up as, as a sex offender, right? At least that. No. It's 
not even that because he's not going to have a lifetime sex offender registry. Because he is only mandated to register for 15 years from the date of his release date. This judge felt that a lifetime registration wasn't needed. No, not only are you only going to serve 10 years, actually not even because you're going to have parole opportunities, but once you get out, 15 years is the only time you need to register because we don't think that, that the children are that important. registration for 15 years what is wrong with you louisiana what is wrong with you judge are you out of your mind facts of the history of the case after his release from prison this is after he gets out from prison for attempted first degree read from the defendant jeremy irvin met and moved in with a woman who had two minor daughters living with her yeah great job mom great job it was alleged that the defendant had sex numerous times with both children who were 13 and 15 at the time the defendant was charged with seven counts of carnal knowledge of a juvenile both children testified at trial both children testified at trial a jury found them guilty on five of the seven counts and the judge gives him that sentence why 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 Tell me why. I want to sit across from that judge and say, why, judge? Why? This this cockroach literally had just gotten out of prison for attempted, for attempted to take someone else's life for the second time. There was something else, if you want to say, that is totally messed up. In his appeal, he stated that the judge could have had bias because the judge had married, had married one of the victims in her chambers like six weeks before the case. I agree. It's absolutely absurd. She, she should not, she, she would have known this case was on her docket or she should have recused herself. Thankfully, I mean, it didn't affect anything, but that is not okay. You cannot marry a victim in your chambers and then try that, that perpetrator. It just doesn't make any sense. Corruption. I need to find that for you. Where? Is it in the appeal? Here it is. Defendant's pro brief states the trial of his wife co-defendant scheduled the same day was postponed. It also states that the trial judge performed the marriage ceremony of his alleged victim in her chambers months before trial. However, they said they didn't see how it affected them. I mean, I have no idea. I, I, you, I, this cockroach deserves to spend his life in prison, but still that is just completely, I think it just shows the state of this court that a judge would marry an accused and not recuse herself. I, I, I don't understand how that's possible. But yes, 
The system is broken. We are in a broken, a very broken system. And until we can wake up and hold our judges accountable that we, that we as a people elect into office, you know, there need to be investigative reporters that would go up and approach a judge and say, how come you felt it was appropriate to give this sentence? Answer the question, judge. People need to know. People don't, you know, I'm not sitting on a high horse. I, I've never voted for a judge in my district. I, I, it's not something I've ever thought about. But we need to. It's our responsibility. Otherwise, it's on us. And uh, otherwise, it's on us. I mean, it's it's just that's just the way it is. Um, we need to hold. We need to do the right thing. I um. I don't know. Um, anyways, with that, I'll let you go.